how do you use all of the notes on the fretboard at the same time? Uh, that's what this video is about, and it's really easy actually. Um, and it's a really good idea to practice this with the jam track in the background, a backing track. And then just let yourself loose and really experiment with the sounds you get out of this. What we're talking about is connecting the notes of the blues scale, of the pentatonic scale, of the diatonic major minor scale. Doesn't matter what it is. But basically what we can do on a guitar is that we can connect these notes with chromatics. And what is chromatics? Let's just, you know, you probably know already, but not with this explanation. Because what we often say, we say weird things in music theory and in normal language. We call it a chromatic scale. And what that is in normal music theory is basically, it's basically just all the notes, right? You just, you just go, go like that. And then we call that the chromatic scale. But with other scales, right, with the pentatonic scale, we go, right, we mix and blend the notes and we have huge interval jumps, right, so I can go, right, I can jump up and down and it still sounds bluesy, so it still sounds like the pentatonic scale slash the blues scale, but scale, right, blues scale, pentatonic scale. But if I take the chromatic scale and I do the same thing, then a weird thing happened. It stops, <laughs> sorry, it stops sounding chromatic. This is chromatic. Right? That sounds chromatic, but this just doesn't. Right? So the chromatic scale is not really a scale. That's also a weird thing to say, right? <laughs> that, you know, it, you know the chromatic scale? Yeah, dofus, I, you know, those are all the notes on the fretboard. But it's not really worth anything, is it? Because you can't use it for anything. Right? And we have these warm-up exercises. Right? <laughs> we go back and forth for no good reason whatsoever, but that's another story. But so what chromaticism really is, is connecting two notes that sound in, like... Right? Right? That makes sense. I can use all the notes that way because the brain accepts me going from one note to another and then just ba 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 it accepts that, but if I play any one of these notes in between, it sounds awful, right? So if I go like... But if I play this note that I just played... It sounds ridiculously out, right? But I can go... I can even play it very slowly. Hi. Because we accept that melody, we know where it's going. Right? As soon as we, we stop at these notes that sound good, sound in, right? The pentatonic scale or the arpeggio of the chord being played in the background, then it sounds good. So that is chromatics. And, you know, the word the, or the sentence, the chromatic scale really is such a misleading concept. Um, it really is. Because, you know, if we treat it like any other scale, Right? Then it sounds absolutely ridiculously awful. And it's not a scale, it's just playing random notes. Do you know the chromatic scale? Yeah, I, I practiced, you know, 10 years improvising. I'm playing the chromatic scale like I would be. Right, so enough about that. Um, but so how do we practice using chromatics? Well, the cool thing about the guitar is that, you know, we got six strings. And every time you go from string to string, you're actually playing a scale interval. Uh, without even thinking about it, right? So if I play the first position minor pentatonic, right, everybody knows that. In the fifth fret, right? Then I have the A minor pentatonic. And if I play that, um, then between the last note on the low E string and the next string, uh, the A string in the fifth fret, there's a whole tone. Right? And, you know, between the last note, the seventh fret on the um, uh, A string, and the fifth fret on the D string, that's a, that's a minor third. Same interval, right? So if I take, just imagine that scale like a string of pearls, right? With different uh, distances in between the notes, the chromatic scale. So you got these, this string of pearls, like this is a long distance, you know, minor third, then the whole tone, then there's the, you know, and so on. 
um, do, 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 then if I connect every single interval I have in the pentatonic scale with chromatics, then what I'm really doing is not connecting every note with chromatics because I have that interval between the strings that has no chromatics in between. All right, so I got, let's say, the first minor third. All right, I connect that. And then I take the next string and connect these two notes. All right, but the interval I did not connect with chromatics is that. Is that going from this note to the next note on the next string? That's not connected. Then I had to go. All right, but I'm not doing that. So I get this really great blend. This is what makes this a trick. I get this blend of chromatics and not chromatics. So chromatics between these two, not between these two, then chromatics between these two notes, not between these two, then and so on, right? So it gives me a nice blend. And that, that is the perfect way of using chromatics. If I were playing a piano, I would do the same thing. I would have chromatics here, but not there, right? Otherwise, it just gets all the 12 notes, and that sounds kind of uninteresting. But if I put chromatics in between the notes on each string, it still sounds kind of pentatonic, but with chromatics. So, stuff like this. So and basically, I'm just connecting two notes, right? It's pretty, pretty simple. Um, so how do you practice this? How do you make that sound part of your playing? And there's only one way. There's only one way. And that is, uh, once you have the technique down, you can say, but well, that's pretty easy, right? If you ever played any three note per string patterns, then, right, with hammer-ons and pull-off, or with alternate picking, you know how to do it already. And it's easy to learn that new shape because it's just connecting the notes you know already. And so you put on a jam track, and then you do what you usually do, right? You take your licks, your lines, your whatever, your sequences, and, right? And then you integrate the chromatic intervals with the, that old stuff, right? So you connect something new to the old, and that's the way to integrate it and make sure that the old triggers the new, right? So um, if I, every single time I open a door, I go like that, right? Every single time I open a door, and I remember that, right? Because I practice it. I go walk around the house for one hour, opening all the doors, and every time I do that, I do this, right? So if I do that enough, then simply, you know, the time after, I cannot open a door without my hand getting, you know, like, it's a response, right? It's a, it's a triggered response. <laughs> really, if I do it enough, then this is going to remind me of this, right? So every time I sit down to edit a video or do some work like that, I have a specific video running in the background that teaches me something. And that's a trigger too. So one, it's an association in the brain. And to create that association with playing is the key to integrating your new skills. And in order to do that, you take the old and play the new. So let's say I have a, like, like, a lick like that, right? And I say I have that going for me. It could be anything. But then I try to see, can I put some chromatics in there? <laughs> right? Let's say I have a line like this. Instead of going... Instead of doing that, I'm just gonna go, right? A good little simple example. Let's say I'm playing the fifth and the seventh on the A, and the fifth on the seventh on the D, right? And then I take the fifth fret on the G string and bend it up with a little bit of a pinch harmonic, stop the note at the top of the bend, and then play the root note of A in the seventh fret on the G string, right? Again. Alternate picking all the way. And then just integrating the, the, uh, the, the chromatics would be... I simply put in the notes in the 6th fret on both the A string and the D string and go... Right? 
So play it with the backing track in the background, integrate it. Secondly, what you want to do is you want to create a rule. I'm going to do this for an entire month. Every single time I improvise over anything, I'm going to use chromatics every single time. Gonna make sure I can't forget because I put up a note on the wall. I make sure that, you know, I put up post-it notes on my guitar, use chromatics every single time because that kind of makes you move into using chromatics. It becomes a habit. That's the way to do it. So my name is Klaus Levine, as you probably know. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. It really means something if you do. Um, and I hope to see you in another video.